Something different in practice? We heard the, the crowd noise out there today. What have you guys tried to do to make oh, we, we, up? Yeah, we always have crowd noise when we're on the road, so we're, we're used to working silent cadence and all that. Um, change things up a little bit just in terms of order, but that might have been something we did anyway. So, uh, you know, I think more than anything, what we've really done is just talk about the focus required to win on the road and really hammer that home in meetings, practice, the whole thing. Just, just emphasis. Um, you know, we, we obviously didn't play very well and we just, we need to play better. We can't, we can't have mistakes that kill ourselves. Those, those are things. And the turnovers, the obvious ones, uh, but the penalties, uh, missed alignments, you just, you know, all those little things and the focus just has to be dialed in and be, be better on the road. You get away with some of that stuff at home, and the other team makes some mistakes. But usually, everybody's a little bit better at home. And it's not easy to win in college football on the road. As you know, you look at USC, go to Boston College, and some of that stuff. It, that's just the nature, a little bit of eighteen to twenty-two year old kids. So you got to figure out what can we do to get these guys dialed in, so we don't have those self-inflicted mistakes. And this program obviously had a stretch there where they were almost unbeatable on the road. I mean, I know a lot of you coaches weren't here last year, but when you look at the last year and a half, is it? Hard for you guys as a staff to come up with, with reasons why mistakes and stuff like that. Are well, happening? yeah, I, I, like I heard Scott say. I mean, if we knew the answer, we'd have fixed it before it happened. But uh, I definitely think there is a little bit of a maturity thing. Uh, the flip side is, have, haven't been here before for for part of that. When you're rolling really good, doesn't really matter if you're at home or on the road. When everything's kind of equal, sometimes that has a little bit more more impact and. We need to get back to being dominant and being a team that, that is so focused we don't make those mistakes. Is it hard to have the confidence to walk into someone else's stadium and, and beat them when you don't have a lot of experience actually going in and winning those games? Uh, I don't know if that's hard. Y yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> but uh, I think I think we're, we're doing okay in the confidence department. I, mean, I think you see it from our defense especially. Um, we just – we need to make a few more plays and, and have some guys step up and maybe do something a little bit more than what's there. Um, and it, I think when you see one or two of those, all of a sudden it gets contagious and, and it gets rolling. But I, I still think it comes back to the focus of doing all the little things right. And when you do all that all right, that's usually when the other stuff pops up. Um, you know, Jay's kind of you know, he's had a couple of really big games, a couple of games not, not so big. What, uh, what do you need to do to get, get him rolling this week? Well, first and foremost, I think he, Jay bit first say, just hold on to the ball. If he if he did that, uh, you know he's rolling, not not too bad there. <laughs> uh, you know coming off the goal line, shoot that missed being a big play by not much, and it was going to be a good play, uh, but he got spun around. And, you know just the ball came out. Um, so that's been a huge focus from us, for us from day one. But we're getting back to making that an even bigger focus. And we're going to take care of the ball. And, you know, I think you see when, when he does that, he's going to make yards. So, um, yeah, we're just working on making sure we understand how important the ball is. It seems, like one, it seems like one of the things with Jay is that we always talk about the fumbles are when he's fighting for extra yards. And how, where is that kind of balance with him? Because that's where he's so good is getting the extra yards too. Well, you just you have to know when, when you're about done. <laughs> uh, you know, one on seven is not great odds. One on three, he, he can usually make a couple more. But, uh, you know, you just got to be careful about that. And especially when you get spin and your backs to the defense, you got to anticipate. You know, he, he got rocked pretty good on the second one, but you, you got to kind of have that anticipation of, hey, my, I'm not in a good position right now, so I better squeeze the ball and know that I'm about to get hit and, and protect myself a little bit. And Coach Sanford was saying maybe get his other hand on the ball too? Or? Yeah. Absolutely, and we, we talk about that all the time in traffic. I mean, is that, is that kind of the next step in truly becoming an elite back is, you know, I mean, he's, he's fine for extra yards and we see how successful he is, but doing that and not turning it over? Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, he's not far from an elite back as is. Uh, we just, you know, at the end of the day, you can only be on the field as a running back if you're hanging on to the ball. Um, Regardless of how many yards you make, and, and we've been talking at length about that, that hey, the, the ball matters more than the yards. Mm -hmm. So if if you got to choose one of the two, yeah. But yes, to the great ones, they take care of both, and uh, I, I expect him to do that the rest of the year.
on special seen, teams. Go ahead. Seen over the years, sometimes it, you know, even back to Brock, the guy fumbles, you, you bench him for a series or something, just kind of wake up call, whatever. He, he played through it the whole way. Which is kind of your philosophy in those situations? Well, yeah, I had Brock, and I remember a game at Wyoming. I believe he fumbled twice, and, and he sat for the rest of the half, uh, not just a series. I mean, it was, now. We were very fortunate, you know, we had David Michael came in, I think ran for 100 and some yards that game. So um, we have guys here that can do that. The thing, Jay is is such a complete guy in the pass game and protections and all that stuff that he, he has value in other areas besides carrying the ball. And we know he's going to be better. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's going to take care of the ball. Talked a lot on special teams about waiting for that kind of game-changing play. Shane had the one punt return uh, that was nice. Do you still think you guys are kind of waiting for that home run breakout? Yeah, play? I mean, that was a great great job. And uh, it was blocked pretty clean. And guys were flying to the ball and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, we came up 14 yards short of a touchdown and turned it over before we scored. So we need to punch that one in. We need to figure out a way to get it in the end zone. And uh, we have the guys that we should be able to do that. So. We're going to keep working, and we're, we're going to get it done. What did you see on the blocked field goal? Uh, we just got a little high up front and, and uh, pushed back, and you know, we, we got to assume every time that somebody's coming after it, and everyone's got to look exactly the same. How much uh, in, in the, on the ground, you know, you, in your two wins at home, that opening series, you guys come and you, know, you ran the ball, Jay, like, what, eight and nine times, and – been very effective and you guys have been able to get into a rhythm because of it. How, how important might a performance like that be, you know, at Nevada? It certainly wouldn't hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, we, the best teams here have always been able to run the ball when they needed to run the ball. And we need to be able to do that too. We can't let it just be dictated to us, but we, we got to be able to run the ball. Um, and that's every game. That's not just this game. But yeah, we want to get off to a fast start. <laughs> Be able to run the football. Who stands out for them on special teams? Uh, their their return games should be good. They haven't had many opportunities. You know, wins always a factor down there. Um, uh, I think they've got an excellent place kicker and kickoff guy. He does he does a real nice job. He's been accurate. Had a, a good year last year and, and been off to a good start this year. Uh, I would say those are probably the biggest. You know, just guys that you're going to notice right off, but. I think just in as a whole, their their coverage units play hard. They play physical. Uh, we got to do a great job matching their intensity. Their defensive numbers on red zone look really good. Have they been turning people over inside the red zone, or they just stopped? No, uh, they forced a bunch of field goals, uh, and they've had a you know a couple misses. Um, they're just really solid. You know, they they. They do a good job. Their defensive line does an excellent job pressuring the quarterback. They do a good job stopping the run. Uh, so we we got to turn up the, the dial a little bit when we get to the red zone and make sure that we're working for touchdowns. What have your experiences been like going down, going down and playing there? Well, not too bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, once you're out on the field, you don't ever hear that stuff. So. I think it's way worse when you go up to the press box and stuff like that. But hey, fans are fans, and uh, it's always great to play in front of a full house of people that care. 